Hi guys, so many of you have completed your CCNA. You're trying to look for a job on the market, but you don't have experience. Many of the jobs on the market are looking for at least one to two years experience. For some, you've sent applications, but nothing is coming your way and you're about to give up. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how you can gain experience without a job. So I understand the frustration that many of you are basically going through. You've done the hard work, you've passed your certification, and you're trying to find a job on the market, but many of the jobs are asking for experience which you don't have. You've looked for graduate roles, but nothing is coming up. You've spoken to friends, and many of you are telling you you're probably applying for the wrong jobs because you do not have experience. And this is the dilemma that many people face. How do you get a job without experience when many jobs in the market are looking for someone with experience? What do you do? Now, if you look at my statement, I'm focusing on you. The reason being that you can't change certain factors in the market. You can't change the fact that companies are looking for people with at least one or two years experience. You can't change the description of the position that's being advertised. But if there's one thing that you can change is you. There is something that you can do to help yourself get the experience that most companies are looking for. I've had the opportunity to chat with colleagues in the recruitment industry to try and understand how do they expect graduates who are coming out of a course without experience to get jobs on the market that are looking for experience. Where do you bridge the gap? Most of them will basically come back with one answer. They understand that yes, you do not have industry experience, but at some point during your course, you have built labs and have configured network devices. And this is the experience that they're basically looking for. They're trying to understand what is it that you've done at home? What is it you've done in virtual environments or simulators? to demonstrate that you have an understanding of Cisco technologies such as EIGRP, routing protocols, switching, all these elements. They want you to be able to showcase the experience that you have from home. So today we're going to be looking at three ways that will help you gain experience. Number one, Packet Tracer. I think many of you have heard about Packet Tracer. If not, you've used Packet Tracer during your studies. And yes, whilst Packet Tracer might not necessarily be advanced and extensive as working with real equipment, Packet Tracer is free. All you just need to do is create an account with Cisco. And this will probably be more relevant to my fellow brothers and sisters in Africa. Packet Tracer is a simulator that Cisco provides to help you configure or learn how to configure network devices. I'm sure many of you have used Packet Tracer at some point uh, during your career or when you're studying towards your CCNA. So Packet Tracer is number one because it is free. The second factor about Packet Tracer is it is portable and can be used anyway. If you install it on your laptop, you are able to take it with you wherever you go. And this is very important, uh, especially when you want to practice and you want to be able to set up labs as quick as possible so that you can get into, you can focus on the configuration, the troubleshooting and the learning. You don't wanna to spend too much time trying to troubleshoot and trying to get the lab to work and spend more time focusing on getting the devices to work. So one good thing about Packet Tracer is the fact that it's visual. It allows you to visualize the network and be able to see how devices interconnect and how they are linked together. And this is important when you're starting your journey because you need to be able to have an understanding of how your network is set up, how your network is designed, and how to get your network to work. So I would recommend uh, you to, 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 to use Packet Tracer as much as you can. Create as many labs 
as possible so that you can be able to hone into your skills and learn the concepts and how to apply them. Research has basically shown that students who spend more time on packet tracer are confident when they come to real equipment. There's actually someone who's done a case study and written a paper on packet tracer and its benefits. I'm not reviewing packet tracer, but I'm just trying to give you the pros that packet tracer will be able to give you. I was reading um, on LinkedIn, one of the recruitment agencies put a post and he was looking for, for a graduate role. He basically acknowledged that whilst you might not have experience working for an organization, but you have set up a home network before. And it is that home network experience that many of the employers are basically looking for because they want to understand what is it that you have done with networking equipment that can be vital in the role in question. So do not neglect or look down on the experience that you basically acquired whilst setting up home infrastructure. It is important that you carry that experience that you attain whilst working with equipment at home or working with simulators such as Packet Tracer to be able to use that as your experience. So an example that I can give you is you can build your lab with EIGRP. And let's say, for example, you build a lab with about 20 routers. You go for a job interview and they ask you, what experience do you have? You can basically say, I might not have experience working for an organization, but in my home lab, I have built a lab that had 20 EIGRP routers. And in that, I created four autonomous systems. And in my four autonomous systems, I made sure that I implemented um, route summarization. I implemented variants to be able to load balance my traffic. The second one is real equipment. There is nothing that beats the feel of real equipment. As you can see, I've got some Cisco switches and Cisco routers. Many of them are not very expensive. Um, you can budget about $150. And if you go on eBay and Amazon, you should be able to pick up enough gear that can allow you to be able to set up your equipment at home. Working with real equipment is going to give you the confidence to be able to demonstrate your skill set on the market. There is something that comes with working with real equipment. Whilst many might not afford to be able to buy a Cisco CCNA kit, I would recommend that try and buy at least one switch or a router so that you can get a feel of the boot process of a Cisco device, so that you can get a feel of connecting to a Cisco device for the first time. This feeling you can't get when you're dealing with simulators such as Packet Tracer and GNS3. The only challenge with Cisco equipment is it's going to be frustrating for you to set it up. It's going to be frustrating to be able to build the lab because it takes setting up, it takes running cables, it takes powering it on, consoling it to devices. But don't stress because that is the learning process. That is how you're going to learn. It's the frustration that you're going to go through trying to build the equipment. It's the frustration that you're going to go through trying to set up the lab. That's going to give you the experience that you basically desire. Experience that you can basically use on your resume. And experience that you can be able to showcase when you go for interviews. So it doesn't matter where you get your experience from. What is important is you attaining the experience, you being comfortable with the infrastructure and you being able to demonstrate that you're able to deliver. Companies are not looking for graduates or network engineers who know the whole spectrum of the CCNA curriculum. Companies are looking for people who have an understanding and a desire to learn. And as long as you're able to demonstrate that you can learn fast, GNS3, just like Packet Tracer, is portable, can be installed on your laptop. It's easy to lab up, but you need to find your own iOS system. So you can go online and, and search and you should be able to find something that will be able to help you. The good thing about GNS3 is there's no lab 
that you can't create. There's been significant growth in what GNS3 is capable of. And in 2019, there's simply no lab that you can't recreate in GNS3. Test things like syslog, SNMP, NTP, radius authentication, AAA. All these things were non-existent five to 10 years back. There was no way that you could be able to set up a radius client inside of GNS3 that would allow you to authenticate your devices. But in 2019, you've got guys who have built virtual platforms that allow you that capability by just simply pulling and clicking a device in GNS3. So GNS3 is a fantastic tool. The good thing with GNS3 is there's so many tools available in the market that can help you in being able to set up. I'll provide some links below. John. So how can you demonstrate that you have the necessary experience that most companies are looking for? I advise or recommend that you focus on specific areas. Now, why am I saying this? It, it is important for you to be able to demonstrate a particular skill set when you go for interviews. Focusing on a particular area helps you to zone down your skills on that particular subject matter and be confident speaking about it. So an example that you can do is focus on EIGRP. Learn everything about EIGRP, how it works, about autonomous systems, about summarization, about how the metric for EIGRP is calculated. Configure EIGRP, set up EIGRP neighbors, and troubleshoot and debug EIGRP connections. When you've done that, and you become an expert in your home lab setup, in as much as EIGRP is concerned, you are able to safely go for an interview and tell the panel that's interviewing you that whilst I might not have worked in a networking role before, but in my home lab, I just give me five minutes, I'll run you down my home setup and my lab that I've created and the configuration that you basically made. That in itself will demonstrate that you do have the necessary knowledge to be able to be considered for a role. The second element is when you apply or go for interviews, make sure that you let the organization know about your home lab experience. This is one area that most graduates do a disservice to themselves because many do not consider the experience of what you do at home as experience that is relevant for you to mention either in a job interview or in your resume. But most of, these, most of the employers understand that whilst you might not have had formal experience in an organization but at some point you have worked with network infrastructure at some point you have configured network equipment at some point whether it's in a simulation or physical infrastructure at some point you have configured devices and you've made things to work and they want to learn about that they want to know what is it that you've done what is it that you know and you being able to articulate that puts you in a more competitive advantage or more competitive position in you being able to get the job. The other element that can help you demonstrate that you have had experience in your home setup is being able to articulate the challenges that you've encountered whilst either building a lab or configuring a lab. The benefit of being able to do that is it showcases that you have attempted to configure network infrastructure. And not only did you attempt to configure network infrastructure, but it also demonstrates that you, when you encountered challenges or roadblocks along the way, you didn't drop the tools down and give up, but you went above and beyond to find how best you can be able to get your infrastructure to work and how you managed to get a breakthrough. Being able to articulate that demonstrates that you are capable of being able to handle failure in a workplace environment where if you don't achieve the result that you desire, you still have the tenacity of being able to go and find out, learn, come back and implement. And all this can be demonstrated by the experience that you have encountered in your home setup. So your home lab experience is so crucial and significant for you in order to be able to provide the base experience that is required when you're basically looking for a job. You need to practice with 
the three tools that we basically mentioned, whether it's packet tracer, whether it's real equipment or GNS3, practice as much as possible. Try to hone your skills so that when you go for an interview, you are able to demonstrate the knowledge that you've acquired from your practice. All right, so as we close off, just a recap of the three tools that we've looked at. We've looked at Packet Tracer, simple, free, easy to set up. We've looked at the real equipment, though it might come at a cost, but it is worth the cost. And the last has been Genius 3, uh, same like Packet Tracer, free and simple to set up. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button or like the video so that you are kept updated when we post new content. So on the Network Hustle, we love everything networking from certifications, sharing tips and guides to help you along your network journey. Our goal is always to create value for you, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your certification or your career. So please stay tuned.